Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a sewing video as part of my new ambassadorship with Minerva. So I'm going to be showing you guys a little collared blouse tutorial using the Friday Pattern Company Bettina blouse and I'm going to be making it in this really gorgeous I want to say, I think it's called Cornflower Blue and it's a cotton poplin, 100% cotton from Minerva. So before I get started with any of the other details in this video, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and let's get started. I have a new set of braces in today, so I'm extra lispy. <laughs> basically so apologies in advance but we're going to be making a gorgeous little collared blouse I'll pop a little picture of my inspiration here on the side I just wanted something that had that kind of like cottage core look about it and I also want to try out a little bit of free motion uh, embroidery I used to do free motion embroidery a lot back in university I took illustration at uni and prior to that I took fashion and textiles in college free motion embroidery was one of those techniques that I learned in college and absolutely fell in love with used it quite a lot in uh, in uni and I used to do machine embroidery over like fashion illustrations and stuff like that and I just lost touch of it but I remember just having such a joy for the freedom of it the creativity so I thought in this make I'm going to try my hand a little bit of free motion embroidery so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add some little patch pockets to the blouse on the front and that means that I'm not sewing directly on any of the pattern pieces just in case things go wrong I can recut out a pocket if I need to but I thought it'd be a cute little addition to a blouse and just give it a really nice personal touch and then the pattern that I'm going to be making is the Friday patina blouse. I've made this a couple of times before. Friday did release a kind of variation in, I think it's necklines, um, just because I'm quite small busted, I have chosen like the slightly higher neckline and that just works so much better for me because the first time I made it, it was really, really low and I, I don't tend to grab that shirt from the cupboard so it just goes to show like small little changes to things like the neckline and stuff like that really make a huge difference. The size I'm making is a medium. I did grade this to a large on the hips because I was postpartum at the time of making this for the first time but I'll probably just make a straight up medium to be honest because it is quite a boxy fit. I'm going to omit the sleeves as well so the way I'm going to do that is a really really simple simple method I've done it with quite a few patterns now is to just instead of sewing on the sleeve I'll use bias binding that I make with the fabric and I'll bias bind the armhole. It might be a case of sometimes the armhole is quite like curved so I might have to just grade it down ever so slightly just to make it fit better but I'm literally going to do that once the shirt is sewn together I'll then put it on and I'll check what the armholes look like and if they need sort of altering a little bit then I'll do it. Cut the project out, show you a little bit about the sewing, more like a sewing vlog chatty video in this one. To start off with I'm going to show you how to prep the pattern. So to crop the patina blouse at the waist I just marked with my ruler where my natural waist sits and then folded that pattern piece under where that line is. We're then going to mark a new curved edge with one of these pattern drafting rulers. You can just do it by eye however and then cut out your pattern pieces and you want to repeat this process with the front and the back. Once the darts are marked, it was time to move on to the collar and I added an inch and a half to the outside of the collar piece and then just drew that kind of curved line by eye and then just drew the line across from the corner. So shoulder edge and the bottom of the collar stay the same. I'm using the pattern piece from the Donny shirt for the pocket and I just added about a centimetre all the way around to make it a little bit bigger. Once they were cut, I actually only ended up using one, but I interfaced them with some standard facing, and that's the prep done. So my pieces are now cut out, and I think, I say think, because I'll probably change my mind on me, I think I'm going to use this lightweight lace, because I can stitch it kind of like halfway in like that, so you've just got a little bit hanging out, but I don't know, because the ends are a bit messy, so I might even order some different lace, to be honest. 
but yeah I just wanted to show you guys quickly I have interfaced one half of the collars um, so it's caught four colour pe collar pieces all together and then I've interfaced my pockets I use the Donny shirt pocket that is interfaced as well now my neck hey guys so the embroidery is done and here are the little collar details that I've done they're very very cute I've gone for something quite simple on the collar just like a little flower with some um, French knots on the inside and then the pockets you'll have to um, forgive my lack of knowledge with embroidery because I've never done it before in this way and a lot of the wet water soluble stuff didn't wash away properly but I just don't have time I need to get this finished for a, um, a project that I'm working on so I'm just going to get it all sewn together now and then I'll put the the black the full blouse in the wash and then whatever's left of the um, invisible like stabilizer will hopefully wash off but this is the pocket which is looking so cute I'm really pleased with how it's come out and my use of little french knots which i've never done properly before so yeah i'm really really pleased with how that looks i mean that's so cute and then obviously i've got the matching collar so my next step is i'm going to sew together right sides together you have to match up your collar pieces so it's been one of those projects that things just keep going wrong with it and i just wanted to normalize this because sometimes we have those sewing projects where you have a vision it takes so much longer than you anticipated and then you just do silly things and don't realize so i've actually stupidly i've just literally just figured out this second that i have put the embroidery which took ages may I add, on the uh, what's it called it the back neckline so the actual collar tips of this project now have no embroidery so i'm just going to unpick this and i'll show you what i mean because i'm actually so annoyed with myself because <laughs> the embroidery would literally have made it but i just don't have time to sit and embroider it anymore but to be honest what i what i might try and do is if um if i get it all sewn together i might just pop like a couple of little flowers on the front or something i just don't want it to look like it's rushed even though i'm having to finish it quickly for um, a couple of projects that I'm doing so yeah annoying but it is what it is and lesson learned I just this is the problem when I'm rushing is I make mistakes I can't fix them it's, a, it's not an issue that I can fix with this one anyways right so let me show you guys this is the collar piece this is what I thought was the collar but it's actually this bit because it's a bit more dramatic I made I made it to be a dramatic collar and I didn't realize until I was sewing together the um the pieces and I'm like no really so now the embroidery is going to be randomly at the back of this collar <laughs> Ugh, it is what it is yeah so now I've got embroidery at the back <laughs> for god's sake Ugh. next one up we got to do the collar this one same thing repeat the same process I could be sat here like preaching different lessons that I could learn from it but sometimes it is just annoying isn't it when you mess up, mess up. Okay so from the original design that I was thinking up I wanted to add some really cute lace trim so in order to do that I'm going to use the interface part of my collar and I'm going to line up where I want the trim on the outer edge making sure that where the seam allowance is, the one centimetre seam allowance, I'm using that seam allowance line as a guide to where I'm going to sit the lace because then when this is turned out you'll see some of the lace and I only just want a little sliver of it like peeping out. I'm going to try and sew it so it's like directly in the middle so that it's just one middle, um, one middle bit of this peeping out. So line it up on your right side we're going to base stitch this down before sewing our two our collar um outer and collar under i don't know i don't know if that's what you refer to them as but basically your your two collar pieces and this is what that's looking like in the machine when it gets to this section of the collar i'm actually going to wait when it's one centimeter away and then do like a pivot like that kind of thing so 
I'll figure it out, but it should be fine. Let's ignore the mess on the floor. So this is where I've got to with the project. The um, front pieces are now attached to the back yoke and the back yoke is now attached to the back. Lovely burrito method there. So there's like no um, exposed seams, which I absolutely love. Love, love, love that sewing method. So satisfying when you're pulling it out and you're like, ah. Um, so now that's done, it's time to attach the collar and you're meant to sew it into facing side up but i'm going to sew it with the embroidery side up even though it was a, a fail um at least i'll have a beautiful hidden little detail at the back so i'm just going to pin that in place stitch that down with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then we can move on to the facing after I've done this is when I'm going to place the pocket on the front before I go ahead and do like all the other finishes and all that kind of stuff. I wanted to put the collar on first before I did the pocket placement just so that I can make sure the collar wasn't in the way of the pocket because I want it to be, you know, a big feature. So yeah. Here is the finished top. I'm so pleased with the finished outcome but let me tell you, this has been one of those makes and one of those sewing vlogs that I have just been so scatty brained and I tell you why <laughs> it's because I have been working on several projects at once and I don't know if anyone else can relate to this but when I'm like trying to do multiple things at the same time sometimes it I just forget what I filmed already you know all of that kind of stuff so apologies that this hasn't been a you know step by step tutorial but I hope it gave you a little bit of inspiration so that when you want to make the patina blouse, maybe you can go and do something like I have, which is a little sleeveless version like this. I'll do a proper write-up on my blog and on the Minerva channels as well, because this is one of the Minerva Ambassador projects. But in terms of the armhole, it was so easy. I literally just um, turned it under on itself and then turned it under again. I probably could have bias bound it, but I completely didn't realise. So I gave the fabric to my sister as they just started sewing and they wanted some fabrics to work on and I, I just bunged this in the bag, completely didn't realise that I hadn't cut my bias binding out. So I just had to make do with what I had. And with the embroidery, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. Obviously I decided to do hand embroidery instead. It does look really cute. I think it will look even better once I've put this in the wash and gave it a little wash. And then last but not least, you guys will find this funny, but I was meant to have embroidery on the collar here, but instead we have embroidery on the centre back of the collar here. But it's a cute little secret hidden detail. These were little buttons that I got from, I think they're from Hobbycraft, they were in a little packet. If I can find them I'll link them below or I'll link something similar below. So yeah, I just used these tiny little ditzy flower buttons and the lace went on super easily and yeah i thought it was just such a lovely make i hope you enjoyed seeing it come together i know i didn't film as many steps in this one so i hope you enjoyed it anyway and i'll make sure to link below everything that i've mentioned tutorials the pattern the fabric from minerva and anything else like that and yeah thank you so much for joining me on this pretty erratic journey I must say in this video um, if you haven't already make sure to subscribe for more erratic sewing videos um, but also sew alongs, tutorials, vlogs, all that kind of fun stuff so yeah I will see you next time thanks for watching bye